use a camera. I've never had a camera pointed this way before. What do I do? Just smile. Uh, I don't this know. is going should in I your look, video. Should I look at it or should I? Don't look at the camera. Andrew Dillman. Lance Haydet. Dylan McNeil. Casey Hildebrand. We are now inside of 30 seconds. Louisville, get ready. We're going to come to you one more time. Alright, things have been wild so far. And watch this, yep, Lance snaps his foot out right there, rubbing tires. Uh, I don't know if it's because of lack of aggression or just lack of snap in my legs, but I pass up opportunities like that to pass Lane Maher. And instead of moving forward, I continue to move backwards, which is not what I want. I started on the front row and now I'm already outside the top 10. So not a great start, not terrible, but I continue to give up positions, creating more work for myself. And then right around this turn, Lance Hayden is going to snap his chain. You can see him looking down, now he's not moving. I didn't see that, almost ran into him. Again, losing another position. Uh, so I've definitely got my work cut out to me uh, for the next lap, just regaining these positions. My strategy in a lot of the turns was to go wide and cut across the rut. So I'm gonna set up wide, I'm gonna hit this grass on the outside, I'm gonna cut inside across the rut and try to hit that grass right there. My thinking behind this was that I'd spend more time in the grass with traction and so my pedaling would actually be more efficient because I wouldn't be just, my back wheel wouldn't just be spinning in the mud, I'd actually be moving forward and a lot of times it was a little bit shorter, so I try to hug the inside right here and try to get a little bit of that grass right there, whereas everybody else is just staying in the mud and sliding around. Um, I do get past a few times right there, but like right here, I try to hold the inside, grab that grass. Um, maybe that was a bad strategy for lap one because it opened the door for a lot of people to come around me, whereas on the, 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 the previous or the coming laps, uh, it is a pretty good strategy because it allows me to pedal. But Dylan McNeil, the Trek rider, is just riding the rut and he's already two spots ahead of me, whereas we went into this section with him behind me. So obviously the first lap, I should have maybe been taking some different lines, uh, but already starting to gain back some positions, as you can see. You can already see Dylan McNeil getting antsy behind this rider, and he makes a wicked awesome pass right there. Ooh, on the inside, makes that rider lose the rut. He stays in the rut, he's able to stay in his pedals. This guy has to get off, kind of screws me over, but 
I do have to say I like that assertiveness. I like uh, how strong he was kind of making it, just making it happen. Uh, I wish I had a little bit more of that in my legs. I was riding these steps really well. Somebody actually wasn't going to ride that line, and then in my warm-up, a fan was standing there and said, dude, check out this line. And I did, and it was super fast, and so that wasn't even, that wasn't, I can't take credit for that. That was, uh, that was somebody standing on the other side of the tape telling me where to ride. Same thing with right here. When I was warming up, I was running the high line. But then Caleb Schwartz's dad said, hey, why don't you try riding the low line and then running up? And it may not have been that much faster, but I think it saved some energy because that was probably 10 less steps I had to run because I was actually riding or even just coasting in that low line. Already there are really big gaps that have formed. It's only lap two and I already have lost sight of the leaders. I can't even see them over to the left of it as they've already done these few turns ahead of me. That's why it's so important to have a good start in cross races. If you lose the leaders on the first lap and you already have that gap to chase, you're basically, your race is over, um, to say it very uh, pessimistically. Um, because it's going to be insurmountable for you to try and regain all the time that you've lost even just on that one lap. I'm not saying I had the legs to race with the leaders, but somebody like Lance Haydett who did lose a lot of time on the first lap and who probably could have raced with the leaders, there's no way that you come back from a, a big mishap on the first lap or even just a slow first lap because the gaps just open so quickly. That was the hometown hero for this race, so as you just heard that guy yell at me, he said, bye to Fairdale, baby, and Fairdale is just this little town, the town that I grew up in here in Louisville, Kentucky, so to be able to race in my hometown with all the spectators there was pretty awesome. Uh, I think everybody there almost was cheering for me just because I'm from Louisville. So that was a pretty special experience. I had a lot of people yelling Pride of Fairdale. I had a lot of people saying represent 502, which 502 is the local area code. I've lived in the 502 my entire life. So pretty cool to, to have that experience on my hometown turf.
This turn coming up was pretty tricky. I botched it a few times, including this lap. I tried to ride the rut, but you get stuck in the rut and then you can't really pedal because it's so slick. So then I'm off my bike running, run around that turn, jump back on. You don't lose that much time getting off the bike. Uh, it's just kind of an inconvenience to have to jump off and jump back on. Right here, I'm holding the inside to kind of hit that grass. It doesn't carry a lot of momentum onto the pavement, but I was committed to it. I think that was maybe one of the biggest mistakes I made in this race, being too committed to the lines that I had chose to ride and pre-ride, and not being flexible enough to change those lines during the race. And had I the opportunity to do it again, I think I would maybe be a little bit more open-minded to trying some faster, different lines based off of what my fellow competitors were doing in front of me. All right, I've already raced two full laps, and so I'm gonna go ahead and pit to get a fresh bike with fresh tires, let them clean this one. As you can see, I gave my pit crew a really bright BMX jersey that matches mine so that I don't have to think that hard because your brain's already not usually working that well. So I didn't have to try and search for them as I go into the pits because they stood out. And I chose my two pit crew very for very specific reasons. Kevin knew exactly how to give me my bikes because he's done it more than anybody. Uh, having been in the pit for me all last season and then Brett having pitted for his son in the UCI junior race yesterday just knew how the pit operated and so that's why I chose those two guys. So I've caught Gage Heck, former national champion, and I believe the youngest person to do so in Tacoma, Washington as a 20-year-old. He won the elite men's title, and I'm not going to lie, I was pretty surprised to be riding with him. Uh, he, he's, he's known to be just a strong dude, uh, very strong on the straights, so for me to pass him on a straight was a little surprising and then I could tell that I was maybe riding the back section of the course in the woods a little bit better so I wanted to get ahead so that I could lead and maybe even get a gap on him and I do get a gap on him. Eventually he comes back to me and we end up battling it out for a few laps.
slip a foot on the run up here and nearly biff it. Gage comes around here and I'm pretty cool with that because at this point I had made a few mistakes, was starting to lose some momentum and him going to the front was better for our overall speed because he was going to push the pace a little bit more than I probably would have at this point in the race. Gage goes in for a bike exchange, which is good for me because then I'll regain the lead and I felt a little bit better on the second half of the course, so I'm okay with being in the lead here. But right here is when I realized, whoa, Lance Hayda is a lot closer than I had expected and I kind of need to stop playing around with Gage if I don't want Lance to catch. So at this point, I go pretty full tilt trying to just push the pace because I really don't want Lance to catch us and I can tell that he's coming fast and there's only a lap and a half left. Everybody's yelling that Lance is coming, so at this point I am forcing myself to stand up out of every turn and try to accelerate as quick as I can so that I can hopefully hold him off for one more lap. I am fully pinned at this point. I dab a foot, make a little mistake. Lance is right there. He just saw me dab my foot. I lose some momentum. I'm off my game a little bit. He probably saw me dab my foot. Now he is even more eager to catch me. He knows that I'm making mistakes. This is all in my head. And, and not to mention that when we go through this last technical section, there's zero fans there. It's bizarre. It was dead silent. 
and I think that just all got into my head and before I know it Lance is right on my wheel and I pretty much know that, that the race is over with how much momentum he has on me there's no way I'm going to be able to beat him in the finale. I'm going to enjoy the last few turns and get as many high fives as I possibly can. Let's go.